Hi, everybody. We're looking at Ephesians chapter 3. Last time we did verse 14. This time we're going to read verses 14 through 21, the end of the chapter. For this reason I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with power through his Spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and how long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And to know that this love that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. So as Paul considers in Ephesians all of the wonder of what we have gained, those of us who were dead in our transgressions and sins and have now been made alive, have been raised and are seated with Christ in the heavenly places, he, he wants us to know that we can kneel before the Father, that we can rely on his strength, that we can be filled with his love, and that all of this will help us to manage our lives, manage our station in the church, manage all that we need until we are united with him in the heavenly realms. You know, it's really fascinating. Um, a week ago, I was in Africa, and I... Um, suffered a stroke. We tend not to think of radio personalities or television personalities, um, celebrities, if you will, as being people who share their inner thoughts, feelings. And so we sometimes see them as a group of people that don't suffer the same trials, the same fears, the same struggles that, that, that many of us struggle well, I do. I struggle with doubt. I struggle with health. I struggle with depression. I, I struggle with um, all of the common lusts uh, of, of people. Um, as I've gotten older, as I've matured in Christ, the struggles have become less and less. As I kneel before God, as I trust in his power, those struggles have become less and less. So last week, when I suddenly lost my vision in the right side of my, um, the right side of my eye, the right side of my my uh, window of vision, I lost all sight there, and um, had only a sliver of of uh, vision. Um, as, as that happened, and I didn't know why in Africa, I struggled as it came back with wondering what's happening here. Um, why am I here serving the Lord and, and what is going on? And did I have a stroke or didn't I have a stroke? And I went through all the common fears and thoughts about that. Um, doesn't God see that I'm struggling and I'm doing my best to serve him? Certainly he will sustain me. Maybe this vision will come back. All of those doubts and thoughts ran through my head. As I went to the eye doctor upon turning uh, back to the United States, on arriving back in the United States, I went to the eye doctor and the eye doctor examined my eyes and then said, Mr. Klump, I'm going to send you immediately to the ER. I believe you've had a stroke. All of those thoughts, fears, and doubts came through my head again. I went to the hospital. I spent a couple of days um, going through the hospital as they searched for what had happened. And finally, they came to the conclusion that it was um, some type of blockage in uh, my brain that had caused my sight to um, go. Um, in short, 
um, I had a mild stroke, not a hemorrhage, uh, but a blockage, a stroke caused from a blockage. Um, I'm still receiving treatment, but in my mind, I struggle with the why. And then I remembered these verses that we're working on. And I called myself back to order and I got on my knees and I thanked God that my vision was still good on the left side of my body. I thanked God that my stroke hadn't been any more severe. I thanked God for um, all of the prayers that had been sent up by saints on my behalf. And I, I prayed a prayer of sympathy uh, for those who have lost sight, for those who will never recover sight, for those who have had strokes that have wounded them seriously. You know, our own struggles can lead us to real empathy and real love. And at the end of the day, that's what Paul is talking about that we kneel before the Father, that we dwell in Christ in his strength, and we count on him for everything, and that we continue to love as he loves us. So, yes, I've had a stroke, but praise God, I'm doing well. And I don't want any of you to be afraid on my behalf. Um, I'll be here next week um, again and continue my broadcasts. Uh, as long as Keith T. will have me on the program. I love studying the word with you, and I love being able to deliver God's word to you. It is an honor. And today, let's commit ourselves once again to the life of love in service of Christ because he first loved us. Have a great day. <music>